Hi, Lucy. Hello. Hi, actually, it's my daughter, Paula. That is um, there, she. Hi. Hi. I was excited. I thought there were going to be two Lucys. <laughs> but Paula's a pretty great name, too. <laughs> we'll wait just another minute or two to see if other people are going to join us. Okay. A lot of people registered, but we'll see. And when we get started, we'll just ask that if you're not talking, you just mute your microphone so we don't get lots of background noise. How do you do that? This is our first time, so how does she mute the microphone? At the top of the screen, uh -huh. there should be a little black panel, and the second one over should have a little picture of a microphone with a cross through it. Okay. And when you click on that, it will mute the microphone. Okay. You see, Paul. So hi everyone, my name is Lucy. Bobby is actually going to be leading this app maker session. He is our app maker guru. Um, I am just your host for the day. So if you have any questions at any point, you can unmute and ask them. And also on the left hand side, you'll see a little blue box. And that's if you click on that, it'll open the chat. So you can type any questions you have into the chat at any point. Um, and if you can't see Bobby, just click on his face at the bottom. That'll bring him into focus because he's going to be sharing his screen and doing lots of other cool things. My face. All right. Um, well, hello everybody. Um, Lucy, do you want to do you want to start this immediately, or do you like to wait a couple more minutes or anything? Let's let's get started. People can trickle in. All right. Cool. Um, well, if anybody didn't get the uh, URLs that we um, shared up before, I'm going to attempt to do that right now. So in the chat, um, I just dropped a link to a tutorial that you can follow along for yourself, which is basically what I'm going to run through with you guys today. And here is the um, video that goes along with that tutorial. So you can watch those things if you want. You can see um, basically all the stuff that I'm going to show you now with uh, a little bit more closure, perhaps. But um, if you um, feel like you want to go through anything else, um, uh, that you learned today, maybe go over some of the things that we, we went through again, um, then maybe you can just watch those videos, and then I'm always around to answer questions um, after this. So, um, awesome. So, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, let's do some app making. Um, I'm going to attempt to uh, share my screen. So I'm going to do that, and then you're going to tell me uh, whether or not you can actually see it. So let me just do that right now. How about this? Okay, so raise your hand if you can see my screen. Or, like, put a thing in the chat. Okay, you're, you're good. Okay, everybody can see it. If you can't see the screen, make noise. Okay. So uh, this is what we call App Maker. Um, you can see it's kind of blank. Um, this is not a really good place for you to start. So I can actually show you um, some things that App Maker can do before we do that. Um, this is a, an app that I built. It's called um, Musicizer, if you uh, look at the title bar. Um, but it's, it, it is a music-making app. And I don't think anybody can hear it, but when I click on all of these little um, blocks right here, they all do different things. And you can see they, they kind of move when I click on them. And so whenever I use one of those blocks, they make sound. And the top one makes a cowbell sound. Uh, the one below it makes a, a drumbeat sound. Um, and they all make uh, different sounds. The one that does not make a sound is this big black one at the at the bottom, and the one underneath it, which is um, what we call a metronome. And so, what we can do it? Uh, oh, you can you can hear it faintly. That's cool. Here, how about? Can you can you hear that? Okay, awesome. So, uh, you can hear now that those things make sound whenever I interact with them, which is which is great. Um, but this metronome in the bottom is begging for me to click on it as well. And whenever I interact with any of the things that are on this app, they just start doing stuff. So uh, let's see what happens when I click on this metronome. That's kind of neat. So the metronome is actually um, driving our music app so that uh, we don't have to click on those things by ourselves. Um, so I can click on that metronome, and it will start just sort of marching through 
our uh, our score, our little bit of uh, sheet music, if you will. And that big block um, with colored squares in the middle is what we call our, our sheet music. It's actually just a, a colored grid. We call it a sequencer. And so this, this thing, the sequencer, um, lets me control all the instruments on the top of this app. So I can maybe fill in this top row, and when I start the, uh, the metronome again, I get a cowbell every time. So uh, just as, as requested, we got more cowbell. Um, and if I fill in uh, some different instruments, you can see that they start to get played. I'm going to reduce the amount of cowbell just, just for a, a second. Um, but if I just start clicking on all these different blocks, then I can change how the song um, how the song goes. So let me just start this again. That's kind of neat. It's kind of a nice march, um, but it's not it's not the best we can do. Um, but this is the app that that someone made, and I am just looking at that app, and I can go onto my phone. I can use that app there. All I need to do uh, to do is uh, copy and paste the. Uh, the URL. I'm not sure if you guys can see. Oh, you totally can. Okay. So the URL that's actually at the top of that um, address bar there. If you put that in your phone, you can use it, or you can click on this big orange button at the bottom, and you, it says, "Do you want to install this app? Do you want to remix this app? Do you want to share this app?" That's cool. We can distribute this app if we really want to, and other people can use it on their phones. But the the most interesting one for us in this case is going to be this "Remix This App" button. And when I click on that, it brings me back to App Maker but it'll show you the familiar thing that we were just dealing with, which is the music app. So this is cool. I saw an app on the internet somewhere. I played with it, and I wanted to make my own version of it, so I just clicked the Remix button, and then AppMaker will let me edit that app. So you can see that it works kind of exactly the same. Um, I can click on this cowbell. I get cowbell noises. I get snare noises. That's kind of fun. And so everything functions exactly the same, but you can see how things are connected now. You can actually edit the properties of this app. So if just simply, if I wanted to, I can take this cowbell and maybe move it down here. That's kind of neat. I can change the aesthetics of my app. Um, if I click on this uh, kick drum, it still functions as a kick drum, but you can see on the right side, there's a bunch of options that I have. I can change the color. Um, I can change the volume of the kick, which is kind of scary. Um, so let's just for fun maybe make the, the stick color um, a pink. So now I have a, a pink a pink baton to hit my kick drum. Um, and let's make these jazz hands um, why not a nice vibrant yellow there. So now I, I, I'm just changing sort of how the app looks. But you can see how there's all these little um, these lines that are coming out of each side of the app. So these are how uh, the different blocks uh, connect to each other. And so one block can tell another block to do something. Um, you can see that the metronome has a purple P line sticking out of it. And a purple P line is also going into the block on top of it called the sequencer. And the sequencer has a whole bunch of lines coming out of it, which talk to all of the instruments on the top of the app. So um, that's, does that part make sense so far? We'll dive in a little bit. Uh, does anybody have any questions about any of that uh, before I go on? We're going to get a little bit meatier, I think. Awesome. All right, so let's, let's keep going. Um, so what I can do, um, let's see, if I click on this metronome, uh, I'll start the app again. And you can see that there's a lot more activity happening. You can see that there's like a whole bunch of different dots flowing out of the sides of the app and little flags that are popping up. And it's telling you how these, little, how these blocks are communicating with each other. So whenever the metronome ticks, it sends out a message on this P channel. And whenever this P channel uh, sends a message, you can see that it's received by the sequencer just, just above it. So those two things are talking because they're connected on the P channel. So if I take this P and let's say I make it um, a K instead, then I can, start this, the, I can start the metronome, but because it's talking to the, the K channel, the weird turquoise color, um, it's not talking to anything. Nothing else is listening, so uh, nothing's going to happen. But what I can do is just start to mess around a bit, and let's say I want to change with what the kick drum is listening to. So I click on this arrow here, 
And I can say, yeah, I want the kick to listen to the, the K channel. And now, every time the metronome um, ticks, it sends a K message, and the K message is listened to by the kick drum, so every time the metronome ticks, the kick drum plays. So you can change how the app functions by, by switching around these colors that are connected to all of these little pipes. But I can, I can continue to construct um, more logic in my app. I don't have to stay with what was already given to me. Um, I can look on the left side here and see that there are a whole bunch of um, app maker bricks that are stored in this, in this tray. And you can see, uh, I can click on any one of these things, and it shows me a whole bunch of different choices that I have. Um, the fun one has quite a few in it. Uh, there's, there's like some game things you can play with now. Um, some things you can do with numbers. So I could actually say, um, let's add a counter. And whenever the metronome ticks, let's just say I want it to count. So I'm going to get rid of this kick drum because it's really hurting my ears. But whenever I, um, uh, when, now when the metronome ticks, it starts counting. And that's, that's kind of interesting. It's not the most exciting thing. Um, but let's add a button, and so that I can be able to control um, maybe individually what happens in my app with uh, with a button. I'm going to connect this to um, the kick drum again. So you can see that uh, when I drop the button down, it just gave me this this P channel. Um, and you can see that it's also connected to a whole bunch of different things already. So I'm going to reset the kick drum and just let it be connected to the sequencer. So now, whenever I click this button. It doesn't do anything, which is super interesting. But now it should. Yeah, it's just broken. OK, so cool. Uh, we found our first bug, uh, which means that I can go over to GitHub and actually file a bug, because this is an open project. Um, and I encourage you guys, uh, whenever you find things that just don't work the way that you think they should, even if you're not sure um, you're doing the right thing, uh, you should talk to us about it, because those are probably things that we should clear up. Um, and you can see that I think um, as I'm talking, there's like this little box at the bottom that says what my Twitter handle is. So um, shout at me on Twitter because I would love to uh, fix all the things that are kind of broken with AppMaker. So uh, I'm going to just deviate from this app a little bit right now because I want to see if we can um, get things to actually work the way they're supposed to. So I'm going to put, I'm going to start a new app over here and I'm going to place a button down and I'm going to put a kick drum down. Let's see what happens. Uh, works. That's great. So um, now I have a really, really simple app. Um, and you can see exactly how these, these connections work. So when I click this button, the, I'm, since I'm on channel E, nothing is listening to channel E, so nothing happens. But um, if I drop a snare drum down, uh, it, uh, if I connect it to channel E, it will listen to my button. <laughs> You can see that as soon as I dropped that kick drum down on the page, it connected itself to channel E, which is something that AppMaker just tries to do. So whenever you have, um, whenever you're playing around with bricks, they will try to connect to each other so that you can just see how things um, interact when you're when you're playing around. And since this is probably the best app I've ever created, I'm just going to say, uh, let's make, let's save this app and let's publish it so that um, other people can use it. So I'm going to click on this button up here. I'm going to say Save As. And you probably can't see the little dialog box, but it said, I'm going to say um, Cool App. It was called Cool App I Made With My Friends. And if I click on the Publish button, then I get this screen. And the screen it just shows me what I can do now, uh, now that I've published my app. I can install this app on my own device. Uh, I can use this app on somewhere on the on the web. And so this QR code thing in the middle, if you take out your phone, um, like nice phone, you can uh, snap a picture of that QR code, and it should take you to a website that is that app. And so you can go ahead and use that app on your phone or install it from there, and that's cool. Um, but let's just go to that app right now. So this is the app that we saw. So the app that I created in AppMaker is now published on the web, and it works exactly the same. And uh, just like the music app I had created before, I can um, publish that, or I can um, share that with other people. So again, if I click on this, this arrow at the bottom, I can click on the Remix Now button, or I can even click on, I can click on this Mail Me the Remix link. Um, so if I type in my email address, 
gmail.com, and I click on the remix link, um, it will email me something uh, that says, hey, here's your app. Do you want to remix it? So then if you're looking at some cool app on, the, on your phone and you click the same button, um, the phone can send you an email and say, hey, um, uh, you can remix this on your computer now, since uh, it doesn't work super well if you would like to try to remix an app on your phone. That's just the worst little tiny screen you, could, you can edit it on. So um, there you go. Now we have a cool app out in the wild. I'm just going to click this X, and uh, you can enjoy it for like all time to come. It's, it's really, um, this is still a kind of a simple app, so I'd like to add one more uh, cooler um, app maker brick to it. I'm going to add this audio clip thing. You can see that uh, it's called dogs.wav. Um, do you guys all know what a, a WAV file is? Put, a, put up a thumbs up if you know what a WAV file is. Just iffy, iffy. So uh, the internet has a whole bunch of files kind of scattered all over it. Um, one of those files is called uh, a WAV file, and it just contains uh, sound. And so if I um, use my microphone on my computer and I record something, it stores it inside of a file. And sometimes those files are MP3s, which is what your iPod uses, um, or uh, they are WAV files, which is just another thing that you can store sound in. And so there are a whole bunch of files out on the internet. Um, some of them are WAV files. Some of them are MP3 files, and some of, the, some of them in particular are WAV files that have sounds of dogs. So if I click on this tape, I get the sound of a dog. Did everyone hear a dog? Yeah? Okay. Um, so I can control that sound now with my app. So instead of um, the, um, let's say, instead of the kick drum, I would like to hear sounds of dogs, then I can click that button, and now I get a, a dog sound. But if I don't want people to be able to click on it, um, if I don't want people to be able to play the dog sound by themselves just by clicking on this on this um, this brick right here, I can add another page to my app. And you can see I clicked on that plus at the very top. And so this is a new blank page. And in the App Maker editor, I can switch between those pages to see what um, what my app has in it. And so I'm going to add the audio clip um, to the second page instead just by dragging it up and over there. So now, uh, this is on the second page, and you can see that it's gone from the first page. But if I click on the, if I click on the button, I get dog sounds. So if I publish this now, then it's still going to look exactly the same, except when you click on this button, um, it's going to play dog sounds, and people can't access that brick that's on the second page unless you really want them to. So I'm going to just put all of my instruments on the second page, because I can. Um, Broke. Cool. Okay, so now my, all of my instruments are here. Let's just say that I want to label them all A, B, and C. And I'll say, let's say this one should be uh, kick drum. Um, this one can be snare drum. And let's add one more brick so that this can be dogs. And again, let's make that A, B, and C. And let's just make sure that's the right order. Kick, snare dogs. Kick, snare dogs. Great. So, incredible. So, uh, that works the way we expect. Um, I'm going to add one more button at the bottom here that says uh, check out instruments. I'm glad I don't have to do spelling anymore. So I'm going to go to page two, and um, the way that I can tell my app to switch between pages is by adding this header brick over here. So if I can click on that guy, um, I can put this at the top, and it's really just a title for my page. And let's say instruments. And since this button that says check out my instruments is, is um, listening on the D channel, I can go over to page two, and I can say let's navigate to here whenever I hear the D message. So now if I'm at my app, I say I want to love that there's a kick drum, but I want to see what other instruments there are. I can click on that, and I go to the second page on purpose. And of course, we need a way to get back. So I'm going to add um, another header on my first page and say that header is 
um, cool and uh, this is E. So let me say navigate here, E. And let's just say this is go back to start. There we go. So now I can get around my app and that's great. So I can save this and I can publish it and you know I can send it around to my friends, etc. Um, and they can remix it further and send me their cooler um, versions of the app. Um, but there you go. That's that's how you create a music app in AppMaker. Um, and I go forth, uh, proliferate your beautiful music knowledge, um, and make the coolest possible apps. Um, I'm gonna like pause for more questions if anybody has them. Um, I can see that I cleared up a couple of weird things like some colors and uh, colorful lasers. I like that and um, uh, the pages thing. So, does anybody have any more questions about how, how that works, or just just thoughts in general? I'd be interested to learn more about the colored grid we saw right at the very beginning. Cause it seems like it integrates some of the more complicated parts of this, like multiple colored lasers coming out of one one brick. Ooh, ooh, okay. Well, let's try to add one to our our ongoing app here. So. If I uh, look at the audio tab on the left side, I can see that this is a sequencer. And if I add that sequencer, I get this um, colorful grid thing that we recognized from before. But I still have to hook this thing up to all the instruments. And you can see that it's using like an F channel and a G channel. So any one of these things won't actually, it won't actually talk to anything yet. So um, let's just hijack some of the things that I was already using. So I can see that my kick drum button talks on channel A. So let's say I want this to be channel A. And my uh, snare drum channel talks on channel B. So let's just make that a B. And so now I can manipulate these things again um, and get them to uh, change what happens on the, on the next page where all my instruments are. But it's, this sequencer itself is listening on channel F. So nothing talks on channel F. Uh, so the sequencer will never move, and the sequencer will never tell anything else to do anything. So what I can do really simply is just get another button and say um, progress. And since this is listening, it, since this is going to send messages out on channel F, anytime I press the progress button, um, it will move the sequencer. Cool. Um, and again, if I want to ha that to happen automatically, I can just add a metronome, and I can say um, attach this, this metronome to the same channel. And so when I click on the metronome, I get a really slow version of the song. So let's just speed this up so we get like a super techno version for this minute. It's 180 beats per minute. Um, Cool, and then we have our march back. Yeah, it's very, very fun. Um, I'm going to do one more thing, uh, which might blow some minds, but I'm going to add a start and a stop button. So this button is going to be... And uh, this is a little bit more advanced, but there is a connection tab here with a thing called an alternating gate in it. All of these things are just more complicated ways to use all of the colors that are coming out of, of each one of these. And an alternating gate does something neat. Um, you can see that it's the, this is the alternating gate at the very bottom. And you can see that it's um, going to shout messages out on channel H and channel I. So whenever I click the start and stop button, it's, it's going to shout messages out on channel G, which, ch which talks to the alternating gate. And whenever I click the button, um, it switches from A to B. And you can see that when I click the button and it's on B, it uses one channel, which is the I channel. And when, it's, when I click the button and it's um, on channel A, it sends out a message on the H. So we can do something interesting with this. We can say, I want the metronome to start ticking whenever it receives an H message. And I want it to stop ticking when it receives an I message. So now, when I click this start button, um, it's going to send messages to the metronome. So I'm going to click it again, and now it's started. If I click it once more, it stops. So you can see how the alternating gate is actually just giving you a more complicated view of, um, of using channels, and you can start to build logical systems that uh, do more uh, interesting or complicated things, and your app can be 
way cooler. Um, I can even take a signal transformer and I can say whenever um, I receive a message, so when I, whenever I click one of these buttons, the thing that says progress, you can see that it says press in the little window that pops up there. But if I change, I can change that message to say like, oh, let's see, this is channel F and the transformed message, let's just make it channel N. And so now when I press progress, you can see that it shoots down there and it transforms the thing into sprocket instead of press. And those are just little or little hints at um, some of the other things that you can do with uh, with channels in AppMaker. But I encourage you to play around with those things. Um, and maybe I'll have another one of these that gets uh, into the the grit of of some of that stuff because you can build some like some games with uh, some of that logic. And yes, it is exactly like a switch. Good call. Um, so yeah, cool. Uh, did did that that clear that kind of stuff? Up there, Lucy. Unmuting. Yes, it did. And I just typed a question that I'll also verbalize, which is, can you make non-musical apps in AppMaker? You totally can. Um, and in fact, if we go to um, webmaker.org, you can see that there is a starting page that has a couple of sample apps for you. And uh, one of them is a chat app, one of them is a simple fireworks app, one of them is a music app. And you can just click on the remix button or you can click on the play button to see what those apps are. Um, and I can just really quickly make us something else. So I'm going to add a button, and I'm going to go to the fun category, and I'm going to add a fireworks. And so this is a relatively pointless app, but it shows you that you can do some other things with, with, um, with AppMaker. And I honestly don't know if a kick drum is supposed to play when I hit that button, but it's cool anyway. So thanks, AppMaker. Um, so yeah, you can build a whole bunch of different stuff with AppMaker. Um, you can uh, use some of the things that are here to uh, track your daily progress. Um, you, can, um, you can chat with others. There's a whole chat channel. Um, if anybody knows what Meetspaces is, uh, it's a nice chatting platform, and there's a um, insert some bricks here that will let you chat on that. I can just add a very simple chat room that acts like a, like um, an IRC chat. So I'm in like a, a Mozilla room. Let me just delete a couple of these things. Yeah. <clears throat> this is our chat room. Um, let's say I want to go back to the basic tab and add some text. No, that's uh, not what I want. Uh, let's go to utility and add a text input with a button. So this brick uh, will let you type some stuff in, and whenever you click the submit, it'll send that out to something else. And let's say I just want that to agree with my chat room here, so um, that's cool. I'm going to disable this. So hello, friends. And if I click on submit, I can see that right there. Um, and if anybody else is, if anybody else here goes into AppMaker and just puts in a chat room, um, because by default we're all in the same room called Mozilla, uh, we'll just be able to. You'll be able to see my messages too. So you can really quickly build a chat app by just throwing in a chat room and a button, and then you can start talking with your friends. Um, and even you know, if you want to be super annoying, you can probably just do this, which will be hilarious. So whenever I start start this metronome, it's just going to send a message to the chat room. So. There's super easy ways to build uh, very simple apps and really easy ways to be very annoying with those apps. So it's, it's very fun. Um, you can find them in the remix set, I guess. Ah, yes. There, so there is um, a, a set of um, apps that are being sort of um, uh, we're collecting. I'm going to see if this, this collection has grown at all. Most of these are just apps that I created. But if you go to, I'll go back for a second. Um, underneath these apps that are here uh, is the See More tab. And uh, we're trying to um, build apps that um, other people can use. And so we're going to take apps that we see that are cool, and we're going to add a special tag to them that will actually um, put them here so that other people can say, oh, I like that app. And then they can click on it, and they can, they can use it for themselves. But this is a collection that we're trying to grow, so it's, it's not uh, the best place to start. Yet, but um, yes, there is a whole bunch of apps in the environment that uh, are remixable, and the AppMaker team has a few in their pocket. Um, how do we get how do we get those app templates via WebMaker.org homepage? Um, can you can you elaborate on that question just a bit? 
Yeah, are you talking about my question? Yes. Bobby? Um, so I'm just wondering if there, when you're at webmaker.org, I was trying to navigate without typing in the URL, the App Maker page extension, mm -hmm. if you can get there through webmaker.org by clicking on the navigation bar. Or um, if, okay, so the one place you can look at App Maker stuff right now is the, the tools section. You can see that this thing has an App Maker um, button in it, and there's like an App Maker thing over here. You can you can start doing stuff. Um, though there is uh, going to be a way to uh, find App Maker from the homepage. Uh, we're gonna hopefully have a banner up there that says, "Hey, check out App Maker," because it's like probably the coolest tool you've ever used. <laughs> uh, and just put that up there so that it can uh, show people that there is this other page. But for now, um, the best way to get there is is that URL, uh, which we put on our Twitter and um, send out emails and etc. Gotcha. Um, and there's another question that says, uh, "Can we get the code for apps we create with AppMaker?" So while we don't um, officially let you uh, click a button that says, "Yeah, here are here's the code," um, you can always look at an app that is created and just hit the view source button. And you get all the code for the app. Um, and if you're like a brave HTML soul, you can look and you can, you can see that there is this big hunk of HTML in the middle um, of this published thing. And one of the things we would like to do is to clean that up so that other people can um, use it easier. But this is your entire app. Um, all app maker apps are mostly just HTML because all of the, uh, the app maker bricks are what we call web components. And each web component has its own bit of functionality. It has some JavaScript and HTML and CSS that just has um, stuff inside of it um, that will just be um, isolated to the functionality of that one brick. And so you can see, uh, let's see if there's this to see. What is this app that I used? Uh, metronome. So there's this thing called CC metronome. And so that this tag right here, that block of text, um, puts the uh, the metronome on my app when in the page loads and uh, connects it to a bunch of other things. So if you really like HTML, if you want to start to dive in and dissect how that kind of stuff works, um, you can in fact go back to the app. You can open up your um, uh, your web console or something, and you can even tinker with it, which is uh, actually kind of fun. So. You can see how a couple of these things work. And so you can just sort of start to take this stuff apart if you're really uh, brave. Um, so that is one way you can start to look at the code of, of AppMaker. But there's also, um, let's see, if you go to AppMaker, I'm just going to try to remember uh, where these things are. But uh, the GitHub account for Mozilla AppMaker has all that builds AppMaker, including all the, the bricks. So let's go to the public thing here, and let's see if it's in here. Um, let's see, bundles, and components, cool. So uh, just for example, if I go up to the button, I can see that there's a, uh, an HTML file here that has uh, the definition for a button. And so um, you can, in fact, build your own components for, for AppMaker, that you can, they are just web components, so if you know what Polymer is and you know some JavaScript, um, you can read up on, on how to build these on our GitHub wiki, which is just this little book right here. Um, you can read up on that stuff, and you can actually create one of these if you really want to. And I'm happy to show, um, show you how to do that, and I might actually do another session that will just, just show, show people how to, get, uh, how to dive into that kind of stuff. But um, uh, that's another bit of code you can uh, look at and play with and maybe contribute if you are uh, um, really uh, excited about that kind of thing. Hopefully that answered that question. Uh, yeah, rad. Um, yeah, is there anything else that I can, I can answer for you guys? Does anybody, uh, does everyone like the, the music app? Isn't the coolest app? Great. Well, cool. I have a couple uh, more things to add of a, a practical nature, but also a super fun nature. 
which is that now that we have all of this amazing knowledge um, and we know what your Twitter handle is, so we can pester you with questions, uh, we can all go out and build our own apps and enter them in the challenge on Pursuitery. Um, and yes, the session is recorded, so you can watch it again. I will post the link ah, right here. It's going to be on YouTube, so if you go to Pursuitery's webpage, you can find it. But then there's the link to the YouTube video, so you can watch it again. Uh, Bobby also dropped in some links to um, the tutorial that you can follow if you want to build your own. And also, there's a whole bunch of information. If you go to the challenge site, there's um, a couple links. The teaching kit is on there. Um, and the video will be on there. So if you go to the challenge and you're wanting to participate, uh, you'll be able to find all of these links. And if you build your own app and you submit it through Pursuitery, you can get the Composing Webmaker Badge. Uh, if you're like me and you really love collecting Webmaker Badges, uh, it's exciting. It's a fun way of getting acknowledgement for the cool things you've made. So I highly recommend that you guys jump in and build your own apps. And also share them with us on Twitter at Webmaker or at Pursuitery. Um, this is the last of Maker Party's Pursuitery online events, but Pursuitery itself has loads of other cool geek outs and challenges that you guys should all participate in. Um, and let them know how you liked this. Go on Twitter and shout out to, to everyone. Very cool. I just dropped a couple more links into the um, the chat there. There's the at Mozilla App Maker uh, Twitter handle you can go check out, um, and you can ask us questions there. Um, and there's an IRC channel. So if anybody knows what IRC is, um, all the developers hang out in a place called IRC um, in the App Maker channel, and you can talk to us there if you really want to. Awesome. And make sure you participate in other maker parties. Party.webmaker.org. I'll put it in there. You can find more online or also in person maker parties so you can learn other cool things just like this one. Right. Thanks so much for being with us. We're going to go not live. <laughs> Three, two, one.